And the bottom left in the red. He is for license to kill, looking to reap some souls. It's Reaper. And his opponent spotting up at the top right for the Shopify Rebellion. She is the Queen of Blades, Scarlet. And this is this is a dangerous match for her. You mentioned you mentioned what we're already dealing with, which is, you know, her having the ping disadvantage, but also losing that series to Patty Mac. I mean, it puts her into an uncomfortable position in this group where all of a sudden she no longer is a lock for top two. And then you introduce the fact that she's playing a very dangerous player in Reaper who's got a lot of filthy shenanigans all ins that are not easy to get a hand on and not easy to get a read on either. <clears throat> it could spell disaster for the Queen of Blades here. Uh, now we're seeing something already out of the gate for Reaper. That is going to be a 17 pool into an expansion. Whenever you have a reputation as a cheesy player, even if you do something that has macro intentions or intentions to head into like standard play, <clears throat> starting off with a little bit of a funky setup can really make your opponent overreact. Yeah, because this is going to read to Scarlet, I think like a version of a build that she's used to kill rogue in the past where you go you take a 17 hatch you or you go 17 16 15 something like that 14 13 12 there are several variations so as the links pop out and she's going to see the fact that this hatch is not done there are going to be some alarm bells going off but reaper's not going into that he's building drones behind this as you say he's playing into his reputation and also in terms of serious planning, this means that later on, if he does want to go for the 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, uh, those two types of builds, it's going to be less likely that Scarlet identifies it. And yes, Deadfest, she's got a spine on the way. Yep. She is thinking that this could be a Ling all-in follow-up, just a mass Ling flood. Uh, and I mean, if Scarlet finishes up that spine crawler, that's going to put her just a little bit behind. We'll see if she does elect to cancel it. No, I think she's gonna let it finish. Okay. Uh, and now look at that explosion of drones coming in from Reaper. He's gonna fire up quite a few more. He's already in a nice little position here. And yeah, Steadfast, we talk about, okay, Ling all in, what do you wanna get? Reaper, he tried to get some drones, wasn't successful. But if I force him, that's fine. That's, all right, that's worth three or four drones right there from Scarlet. So he got damaged just by representing those six Lings on the map. Now. Scarlet, I think, despite this, is still going to be favored in this game. She has incredible macro. As the game goes later and later, you would expect her to be able to come back from disadvantages. But Reaper is not intent on letting it get there. Behind this, there's a Roach Warren. Sure, there's an Evo Chamber. Sure. But the lair is halfway done. That lair was a three-minute lair. This is... I, this feels like Nidus play. It feels exactly like Nidus play. I'm almost going to be surprised if it isn't. Scarlet... For her part, she is also going for a two base build, but her layer is starting up almost as Reapers is finishing. Now, Scarlet was able to get a pick off on her opponent's uh, Overlord right there. That's pretty nice. Okay, with two more of these, okay, two more of these gases coming down. Plus one melee was started up for a moment. It actually cancels it to get the quicker spire, but I think he's probably going to be potentially going back into the plus one melee. Regardless, this is a two base spire play. And if Scarlet tries to go two base, you know, Roach of her own, I feel like the two base Spire play with how quick it is for Reaper is gonna do amazingly against what Scarlet's doing here. It's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because on the one hand, yeah, that is, by the way, the quickest lair I've seen in quite a while. It's stupid fast. Technically, a two base plus one speed Roach timing is good against two base Mita because the Mitas are really, as your Roaches arrive, they're barely popping out. You need a lot of spines, it's a problem. But you're right, because of how quick that lair was, that timing is no longer there. Speed will not be done in time for this damage. In fact, yeah, um, the spire will be done before Roche speed is done. So Scarlet's just gonna have to batten down the hatches for a while. And Steadfast, if you are worried about ping, if that's a problem, well, it also minimizes your defensive utility against Muta play. You can't go in fasters as easily because you just won't hit your fungals well. Uh, even say vipers are hard to use because they are floaty units. They like to go and they like to run forward. They like to kill themselves. 
against a Muta flock. So it makes life a little bit hard, but Scarlet seems to have an understanding of what's happening. That is a very quick... That's a Hydrogen going down before her third base. Well, yeah, before her third base finishes. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> I will say something that's a little bit interesting. So so it's actually not that hard of a read to make. It is a good read that Scarlet's made. But with how late this third base is and no roaches being seen on the field, you can have a pretty decent idea of what your opponent's going for. But Reaper is not going to be going mass muta. He's going to be going muta, five muta, into a massive commitment of roaches. And it is going to be a huge all-in here. Now, Scarlet, with this queen count, with her potentially droning up even more, she could find herself exposed to this uh, to this follow-through from Reaper. Oh, well, as I say that, he starts up five drones. That is quite surprising to me. Scarlet, okay, she scouted... Oh, she scouted the Spire. Well, oh, think... no, no. She, well, okay, that, that, never mind. That's two separate scouts. There's one where she sees the gas a long time ago, and then there's one where she sees the Spire, so they overlap with each other. So it's, it's actually a... Uh, it appears impossible because obviously the things were built in a different order, but it's just a funny way of the scout working out. Now, I think I think we saw drones back in, into the play for Reaper, though, because that Overseer goes in, sees how many roaches were hiding behind the mineral line. And then, Probably. Yep. That, then that's going to be far less effective now. So Scarlet, but it, it's so weird. Traditionally, when we talk about playing anti-muta play, you don't build Hydras. You build Hydras when you're ready to turn them into Lurkers, and that's about it. Before then, you defend on Queens, you defend on Spores. So seeing this amount of Hydras early from Scarlet, when her economy is not... I mean, it, she's on 64 workers now, but it was still a two-base setup. Uh, this screams aggression to me. Probably timed out around when plus two attack is done and when Hydra range is done. But in general, I don't know how... It, it feels like the Hydras are just too early. Uh, they are rather quick, but Reaper, because he was planning to commit to a big 44 drone all in, everything for him is slowed down. Oh, Scarlet, she's going to be able to contaminate the correct Evo chamber here. Oh, very fortunate for Scarlet right there. That's going to make her timing even more deadly. Then I, I think she's just going to potentially run over Reaper because of Reaper's commitment to the uh to the lower drone count for a while yeah the, the one thing i'm worried about is when you do go into that heavy roach army behind this and again reaper i mean we just see supplies behind uh when you have some number of hydras generally that that puts your supply down at such a point where the roaches just get on top of the things the hydras can't be the fire base that they need to and then that army kind of evaporates but as Scarlet finds herself in a supply lead, as she really she just has been macroing better over the last several minutes, as another meet of, or excuse me, the first meet of this game will go down. I don't know that Reaper's going to have that great big roach swell where suddenly the, the Hydras are not as effective as they might otherwise be. But a steadfast Reaper with this, the first round of aggression didn't work. The second round of aggression didn't really work. Third one didn't work super well either. This is a rather quick hive coming out of him now. It looks like he just wants to push this game super late now that the yeah, the, the early aggression didn't work super well. Yeah, and that is maybe technically the correct decision, but against a player of Scarlet's caliber, I wouldn't want to go into the late game. I feel like that is asking to get outplayed. Now, this is a great concave from Reaper, who is going to be able to get some good corrosive battles, but Scarlet just barely gets out of there before those vials land. Uh, so far, nice, nice job. Nice job from uh, Reaper with this concave. Scarlet really wants to force her way in. Does get some good corrosive vials on her opponent right there. And Reaper, honestly, at this point, just throw the mutas away. Like, it's it's six supply that's going to add nothing to this fight. Yeah, now Scarlet finds her way into the fourth base. And by the way, she does have a hive, a lurker den behind this. And she can't really engage. There are enough Ravagers for both Reaper and Scarlet that every engagement really just gets forced away before it can really start. Uh, notice Reaper, he's got two clumps of his army, so any spot that Scarlet really looks to engage onto, it kind of forces a concave, but actually, Reaper's not using that part of the army, but he gets a big concave right here, so Scarlet, this is not where she wants to fight to do. Backs up, takes a bile or two, but nothing too badly. Those biles on the backside gonna knock a Ravager down, Scarlet making a fighting retreat happen, and notice she's actually not really remaxing. She's building a couple more drones, sure, 
but with the Lurker Den done and with the Hive just about done here, it feels like she's keeping a little supply open. But steadfast, this spot she's attacking into, it feels so scary. It does. I was going to say, Reaper's been doing a great job of taking engagements overall. And then right as uh, right as I was about to say that, Scarlet got some really great vials on him. And, but yeah, no, Reaper's done a great job of taking advantage of this position. And Scarlet is continuously attacked in here. She has made sure, though, to never take terrible trades. Oh, Reaper just started up three layers. That is a mass misclick right there. That's a, that's a funky one. He does have his own Vipers on the field, and he's actually going to abduct Ravagers, which is kind of a funny little play. Scarlet's got to get out of here. I feel like this... Oh, those Corrosive Bows were not bad. Uh, this could very suddenly just end with her getting jumped on. Like, this army is actually, I feel like, a decent bit bigger here for Reaper. And Scarlet's got a lot of Hydras on the front line. Yeah, that's always a problem, right? You, hydras are good. They're a ton of damage, but they cannot be the fighting force. They are the damage force. They do not want to soak damage. Uh, but Scarlet, now she's got a bunch of roaches into the fourth base of Reaper here because as the game goes on, she's got her Lurker deck. She wants to throw the supply away, to be totally honest. She wants Hydra or she wants Vipers. She wants Lurkers, doesn't want roaches nearly as much. So Reaper taking significant economic damage here, but he wants to dive on top of Ravager. He gets one. And again, I don't think that Scarlet necessarily breaks the high ground, but she's got a couple Lurkers now with that Lurker range. No Burrow speed just yet. But as she establishes this position, she's just slowly closing out spots on the map where Reaper can exist. Yeah, exactly. And there's no Overlord speed for uh, Reaper. Scarlet's going to finish hers up, which means that getting Overseers into position against these Lurkers is going to be a little bit more difficult. Reaper doesn't have his own Lurker set up either. So, I mean, he's really relying on these Vipers and they are just not set up for success. A Blinding Cloud could be great. They are very clumped up right now, but I'm I'm really liking this position here for Scarlet. And this is what I was talking about with the, do you really want to go to the late game with Scarlet? I, I feel like the answer is no. There's a couple of, or at least one of Ducks coming on in. Oh, one of the Vipers does fall for it though. And I feel like Scarlet is just going to start taking better and better engagements as this goes on. It really is. Now, that being said, this concave from Reaper is still very nice. But look what Scarlet does. Just drops a ton of changelings, which means she knows exactly where the army is, knows where the lurkers need to be. And again, the Viper doesn't even get the... I think, no, it got the abduct, but it gives its life for the cause once again. That being said, Steadfast, not a ton of lurkers in this fight right now. And the detection from Scarlet is not well for reapers not going down but even still scarlet with reapers sorry not with reapers with lurkers there takes a pretty clean game one yeah and her transitions were just sharper i uh, i mean a lot of the transitions for reaper were non-existent he didn't get that lurker den he didn't didn't get anything meaningful in the tech besides those vipers and the vipers were not effective enough to make it happen and scarlet I mean, she survived a lot of, even though there wasn't any real big commitments from Reaper, there was a lot of theory that was very dangerous. And she kind of checked every move before it got rolling. And then once it headed towards the late game, I mean, she just showed that she was the better player. Yeah. I mean, that there wasn't, I, I think that was very clear. But as we move into game two, it's going to be a much shorter map, Steadfast. It will be inside and out. And we saw game one. Reaper threw a ton of stuff at the wall, ping-ponging Scarlet's read of the game back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now is the time for, for Reaper to take advantage of these ideas he's put in his opponent's head and then capitalize on them. Go for, say, the 14, 13, 12, because you gave Scarlet the idea that it wasn't going to be that necessarily. Take advantage of those builds because Reaper has to be looking at this as a serious yes to win, not any individual game. I don't know if it's going to work out like that, but at the very least, I think he's he's laid the groundwork to maybe at least give himself a chance in that way. Yeah, but regardless, we got to get into game right here, right now, because something is happening. It is going to be a 12 pool from this man spawning up at the top right for a license to kill. It is the dangerous Zerg player Reaper. And the bottom left, immune to the scythe. She is Scarlet. Ah, uh, and she goes for the pool first. Well, 
it's been a fun day steadfast uh <laughs> it's been a fun day as i was like how do i how do i go about this i was thinking of something along those lines yeah this is uh this is a terrible situation for reaper yeah you know we, i talked about oh well maybe do something that is that feeds into what you did game one 12 pool is not it 12 pool is i i feel like 12 pool is almost too predictably aggressive so predictable yeah yeah like, if you're Reaper and you're known for your cheese, I got... Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Okay, the day is actually over then. That's... There was a chance that if it was a 12-pool macro, it's fine. But Scarlet's just going to look at this, and she's just going to laugh. She's going to smile, and she's going to enjoy her 150 USD from the series win. This is... Uh, this is as part of a build order counter as it comes in StarCraft 2. I literally don't think anything counters builds harder than this. Steadfast, uh, do you know what I want now more than anything? Or what I wanted shape? like 10 seconds ago? What's that? I wanted player webcams. And there we go. It's done. Scarlet, I'm sure there's this cheeky smile. She takes the 2-0. And uh, yeah, 